All right, I'm here this afternoon with Ella Masser and Brittany Bach. They just wrapped up the first dash scrimmage against Texas A&M, the first of a, a two-part um, series, as we should say. The return leg is going to be Wednesday, April 2nd. And for those of you that don't know, we will be um, having a bus trip. I don't know if you guys are even aware of this. We're going to have a bus trip up to College Station, so hopefully we'll have a lot of dash fans there in Orange oh, to come. Oh, right. right. awesome. Yeah. 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 To kind of counteract the uh, oh, dash I like the little move. dash on yeah. on here. Dashing to Texas A&M. So that will be the last day that I'm 27 years old. And then the next day you're 50. That's right. <laughs> I'm still not as old as Aaron McLeod, but I'm getting there. Yeah. I was going to say you're not the oldest player. It's very close. Team. It's close, though. And, and Brittany's up, not that much younger than you. Britt will get, be turning 27 eight days later. The day before the opener. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. So it's Something about these April, April so birthdays April, here. April is a really big month for you guys. Yeah. It is. All right. Well, let's the talk. Let's is. talk a little bit about the scrimmage today. Um, I was really pleased to see, compared to Wednesday, that we got to see a lot more of what are probably the Dash starters playing mm -hmm. against A&M, and then you saw the trialists come in later. How do you feel about today's scrimmage compared to Wednesday? I mean, I, I feel like there were different goals. Brandy had different goals, and I'm sure the team had different goals. So, you know, what did you feel like coming out of? the scrimmage today other than taking the knock on the head? Um, I don't know, I mean, I, I thought we, we did well. I mean, I think it's, again, we're learning each other's movements. I mean, we've, we're only 10 days in the preseason, um, and we might know each other. Like, you know, I've known Britt since she was a kid, but yeah. never played together. Um, wow. So, and like Randy told us, you know, no, not one eleven since we started has been the same 11. Um, so, again, we're still fighting for those positions and you know we're still trying to learn okay you know Tiff likes to get in line you know Kaylee likes to play and then get it off I mean it's just depending who you play with them what we look like on the pitch but I think it's getting better you can see the first five minutes was real frantic five ten fifteen minutes and then all right settle let's, let's get a groove but I think the flow is a little bit better because the rice game we just didn't have it's in the second half I thought the trial is um I keep calling them trap but like that first group had a very good rhythm, and then the second half you bring a whole new group on, and it just you it, yeah you lost the rhythm. But I think um, this game we did a better job. It was like she said frantic, but then you start to um, kind of get the ball swinging a little bit better, and it's going to take you know time. But the more games we get together, um, the better. And I think that's good when we have six preseason games. Well, and I could see today the tandem of you and Becky Edwards mm -hmm. in in the middle, mm -hmm. kind of like. I don't know if it's it's a midfield pairing or if you would almost say it's like a maybe right before like, I like sweeper stopper kind of pairing. It seemed very fluid. Yeah. I, I really wouldn't know how to describe well, it, but it, it seemed like a great partnership. Yeah, what's nice is we played for the flash together and both holding mids and we had Sager on top. So we learned how to play with each other. But I think it kind of, sometimes you click with a player, sometimes it's just off. And I think with Becky, we're very different. Um, in our playing styles, but still have, uh, I don't know, we can come together well, and we move off the ball well. So a lot of times I'm like, Beck, I'm just going to circle around and open that space for you. And we had fun today. It was fun, you know, starting to get that rhythm again. So if you're the enforcer, as, <laughs> as Ching calls you, what would, what would, what would Becky's tag be? And what, and what would Ella's tag be? She's an enforcer. Enforcer times two. I think we're kind of similar and um, Beck's like Beck's so smooth you know like she kind of makes it she kind of just floats and then like she can do something real creative and um, I think Beck sees the field like really really well mm -hmm. and technique and so does Brett I mean that's the thing they can be enforcer they can be smooth but the fact is that they're probably the, one of the you know top two or three technical wise so I think that's what the holding mid is and what you need you need to break up play and if Beck if Brett comes in crashing then you know Beck's gonna pick it up so and clean it up, and, and she's a great link player. Yeah. Um, so I think that's what's good. And I, too, can go forward and do that, but that's a little bit more of Becky's yeah. role. But what's nice is I think with the three is we can all um, interchange who, whoever we're going to have in there. I think um, that'll be good. And that's going to be really key, knowing that our, our back line is still a question mark. We know that, you know, Megan's still in Sweden mm -hmm. unless Tyrese loses. I mean, that's the biggest thing. It's yeah. like we want them to do really well. And, of course, you know, Champions League is one of the biggest honors you can ever play for um, outside your country. But, I mean, her and Cleany, I mean, we need them back. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. just a leadership as well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Speaking of leadership, um, 
have you guys decided who's going to be captain, or does Randy decide that, or is it a fight to the death, the last survivor? <laughs> I think a lot of people have stepped up, especially as older kids. Um, I mean, there's there is an age gap. There's like 26, 27, and it's and 23 then, and 22. Yeah, 22. Um, so a lot of experience, no experience. Right. So I think that it, I don't think there's one distinct leader, but I think we're all. I mean, that's the thing that I keep giving Randy credit for is that we're all like the characteristics of what these. I say kids, but these these guys stand for. It's like if Britt steps up and she does this role, it doesn't. Then she steps up one day, and then maybe I step up. It's and then literally Becky steps up. I love it. And he, it's not like he he hasn't showed any favoritism. He'll, I mean, as far as our leadership, every day it's something. It's someone different, and everyone there's respect throughout the whole team, and I love that because it's, it's huge. no. It, it's not. There's no pressure. There's no. It's not like an awkward like oh well I like it just flows and everyone's willing to take the who you know steps up to take that leadership role and then when someone else does it it's just it works really well. It's like the Indian run, you know. It's like you start up front yeah, and it then really you, is. like move back, move back, move back. Then once you're time to sprint to the front, you know you, you sprint to the front. And then people and we and everyone follow suit. It really does when people when someone steps up, everyone's just like goes along and now I know how does it. it work in camp um, knowing that a fair amount of the girls are going to have to be cut you know by April 4th some of them of course might have the opportunity to be rostered with mm -hmm. the aces or you know mm -hmm. maybe another NWSL team but and you guys have dealt with this before you've, you've both been at several clubs how do you deal with that on a personal level and on a team level that okay this person I'm, I'm playing with might not be here Ooh, and that's hard because especially in the longer that they're around then the closer you get to those players so it's it's good that I, I think the deadline was pushed back or something a little bit oh, that's good. and um, but then that makes it harder because then these players are going to be around I don't know the exact deadline but then it's, it makes it harder because they're around for a bit more and and then they are more part of the team so it's a hard role um, obviously the game though you can only have 20 20, 20 so um, great group of girls in though like really it's a, it's a fun group to be around and every day um, just, a, just a good group well I'm surprised when I when I looked at the background of the trialists I mean there's some really great stories there uh, it seems like everybody's a great story but Emily O'Neill who played at Stanford gave up soccer in 2005 30. yeah and like, what and is convinced, I guess, by her family, oh, you, you know, trying for the Bay Area Breeze, so two years ago she's playing semi-pro, gets with the Thorns, and now, so it's like, Em is, that's you just know, amazing. You know, you talk about character, like, Em is somebody that you want in your team no matter what. Like, she, her, and um, one other defender have, like, really, really stood out to me. And it's not about, like, the way she she plays, absolutely, but the way she carries herself on off character the pitch. Character off. Uh, yeah. And she is, I mean, she might not have the playing experience, but... Uh, coming on and what she stands for, it speaks for itself. Like she's not a vocal leader, but what she does with, you know, her mannerisms and the way she, you know, gets stuck in and works hard. I mean, it's been we needed that in the, in the center back position, and she's stepped up more than I think anybody could have asked her to do. Yeah, that's so important because I know a lot of fans, especially watching this scrimmage today, are like, oh, they have to sign that trialist or they have to sign this trialist. And like, you know, there's you really so not a lot of space. Yeah. You know, so you can see a lot of you can see a lot of talent. Three out of nine. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. You see a lot of talent, but I think what you're saying about the off the field contribution and what Britt likes, I don't. You know, maybe it's not my favorite of the try list. You know, what Randy likes, it doesn't matter. You know, what I'm saying it's like everybody finds different, you know, greatness and players. Hint why we're here, not on another team. Right. You know, Randy saw something in us that you know our past coaches didn't see and and believe in. Well, especially I know for you and for Becky coming off seasons where you had a pretty early or maybe mid season injury and then full season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know, all the, the way so I, I'm sure it wasn't surprising to you or to Becky to be left unprotected. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I would hope that it was somewhat satisfying to get the call that. Okay, I'm I'm taken, but I'm taken by someone who really wants. Me. And that was because at first I was like, man, I'm gonna you know, you another get, city, you're another kind of year. like, but and then, but I think everything happens for a reason. And and two, just being reunited with reunited with Randy, and, and he called me up, and just to see how bad he wanted me, it was like, oh. 
and, and so it felt good. And, and it was hard leaving, you know, it's hard to leave your club, especially you've been in Chicago. Chicago for a bit. And yeah. um, it's, it was hard. And there's a lot of, like my teammates and my coach, you know, like it's hard to leave a team, especially the fan support um, still reaching out to you. But Houston's yeah. welcomed us. So it was, it's been amazing so far. So Well, let's talk a little bit about your experience with Houston, especially since both of you are from Illinois. Mm -hmm. You know, you're from Chicago and you're from much further well, out. I'm a yeah, suburb. So I'm I, not Chicago. Yeah, I but can't still, claim but, that. but relative to where she is, though, I, mean, yeah, I actually looked it up. I mean, you can say, okay, Naperville is like the woodlands of Houston. Right. You know, but, but, I don't but know, like Dallas. Yeah. Austin, actually. Austin, Austin, Austin. So how would you compare Illinois in general to Texas based on your experience so far, which I know is really just a few weeks. I mean, I love the farming. I mean, going to rodeo, I'm like, I'm at home. You know, you see all, I mean, it, it, this is, okay, this was like it on steroids, but, you know, it was, this is, you know, the cow manures, when you get off the highway right there with the stock show, that's something yeah. that I'm used to. If you get up it in the winter, or sorry, in the summer, and you don't smell that summer breeze with a little bit of manure in the background, <laughs> that's not normal. So this for me is, is the most home on the So you'll probably be really comfortable on that trip to A&M. That's but, right. Because that's... Uh, they're very actually kind of like, what are the Aggies? And then I was like, I think they're farmers. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see how that comes. What about for you? What's been your experience in Houston? Well, it's funny. I'd say about six years. I never used to listen to country music. My mom and my sister are huge into country. And I, I wouldn't listen to it. Um, and then midway through college, started listening to it. My sister kept telling me, like, I could see you on a ranch. I could see you on a ranch. <laughs> Oh, for sure. And we need to find you an Aggie man. <laughs> and I literally, but like, coming down here, some of the people are like, "You're gonna love it. You're gonna stay down here." And I'm like, "I don't know about the seat, but I, I've been to four days of the rodeo. Wow. I went to the cook-off. Um, I've been. I love, you know, just the southern. I love it. I love country music now, um, and it's been, it's been a lot of fun. I. I my sister lives in Wyoming now, and I brought that up a few times. But love that country. I don't know. I just I'm not a city person. I'm. I'm but okay, but Houston is one of the fourth largest city. In but it's the different. Country. It's like Chicago. We were talking about this. It's Chicago, I think, it's just a lot more denser, like the downtown compared to right. here. Mm -hmm. It's so sprawl. We're all about the sprawl. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm only allowed one more question. I just got told. Okay. All Sorry. right. Well, let's make it a good one. Okay. Breaking theory on. This is a tough one. Um, okay. Apparently, you brought a dog with you to Houston. Um, that would Tell be us my that. Um, that would be my roommate's dog, uh, Aaron McLeod. Um, Max. Uh, when she went to Cyprus, we figured it would be easier for her to drop him off with me instead of going to get him quarantine. And luckily for me, last year I was the dog watcher when she would go to her Canadian stuff. So um, I love the little guy. He's like he's a really good cuddler actually. I keep telling Brad if you ever want to, you know, come <laughs> yeah, over. He's yeah. a good plus one. Does he come to a lot of the dash practices? Um, he's been here twice. Um, I would. There's the rumor has it there's a sign saying he can't go on the field. I didn't see it. But a lot of us don't see it. But somebody, Aaron McLeod, won't take him on the actual pitch because she saw the sign. So it just depends on who takes him for the day. Um, but he'll. I think he'll come out like we have short practice and stuff. The girls seem to like him as well. He can, he can fetch the ball. He he's a lion. Like, he's he's like a lion. Oh, I love it. He's All just a right. little All right. Well, you're officially excused. Thank you very much. But, I apologize but, for the head stuff. But <laughs> thank right you for participating. You're welcome. No worries. <laughs> thank you, guys. All right. So, yeah, so we did talk about the, you know, you're the enforcer. <laughs> Becky Smooth. So is Ella the double enforcer or what? Yeah. I've tried to. Or the super secret enforcer? Or the I don't know. She goes just pretty hard. I mean, just she's like a bulldozer. She just like runs around stuck into everything. Sometimes you're like, Ella, don't. But I guess sometimes I, I go into some tackles like that too. But we're talking, we're clean. Like, I'm not a dirty player. I play hard. But I never go, you know, go after yeah. people. But. There's definitely a fine line. And you could see that, that tough play today, especially that, you know, A&M plays at a level of, a step mm -hmm. above, right? So yeah. you, you, you could see that difference. Mm -hmm. So you needed that that little bit of a yeah, bite. bite to it, yeah. And I think that's important. Um, obviously, if everyone played like me, it wouldn't be a pretty game. <laughs> but, you know, I think, too, I, I do like to play football. I do like to play soccer. I do like yeah. to get down and play it. Um, but sometimes it calls, you got to make a statement. Yeah. 
Yeah, especially as, okay, so we're the expansion team, we're the first ever NWCL expansion team. Um, you know, what do you feel after two weeks of, of preseason and a couple scrimmages, what is our, what, what is our attitude going to be? Are we going to be the underdog? Are we going to be the groundbreaker? Are we, and, and I know this could change mm -hmm. as this all develops, but I feel like from the outside that we're not a traditional expansion team. I, I don't think we're going to be, you know, sitting mm -hmm. in the eighth and ninth and climb for yeah. every, every point. I think we've, we've, we've picked a great team, so it's that question mark of chemistry. But yeah. how, you know, how do you forge the team's identity? Well, I think that, you know, started with Randy and, um, and our management talking about they do not want to come in and just sit back. Uh, playing for Randy in college, you know, we wanted to be a high pressure team. Under control, but high pressure. You don't want to sit back and just counter. And so taking that same approach, um, got some athletes on this team, but girls that can play. So I know that obviously there's the WPS. <laughs> <laughs> and WSL. <laughs> I do that too. I do it all the time. Um, you've got a lot of good teams. There's not a ton of teams, so a lot of the talent's in on the nine teams. It's very complicated. Yeah. Talent. So um, you know, it's not gonna. It's not like oh, we're gonna come in and we're gonna be top of the table. You know, it's gonna be a battle for every game. But I think, you know, we have those expectations for ourselves, and and we all, you know, you've got players on this team who want to prove something um, on so many different levels. So. Um, I know for myself included, you know, I want to be on a team that's a, that's a fighting team. You know, you, you play with passion, you play with heart, and um, it'll be a battle, but I think, you know, we're willing for that challenge. And you guys have already seen a couple of Dynamo home games, mm -hmm. so you've, you've gotten a taste of that environment and oh, yeah. the fan base, and, and, and I'm sure you're aware of the, the record that the Dynamo set last year, you know, the unbeaten streak at home. So. You know, maybe that's something that the Dash can continue that tradition. Yeah. Of this, this orange oven is a fortress. Yeah, no, it, it was a great environment. The first, for both games, a um, lot of support, and it's a community. Um, and when you're part of, especially the way they started this season so far, it's exciting. And, and you know, now that we're kind of like paired with them, um, we want to continue that. and. Met a lot of the fans out out today were amazing. Both games, um, asked with how many people came and um, yeah. stayed for the autographs. And we made sure we didn't. We felt bad because the rice game we didn't get out to as many people. So we wanted to really make sure like we're all about that and uh, and so thankful for them all coming. A lot. I'm glad that the game got moved to the bigger field because that the other fields would not have been able to hold that. No, this was line. great. It was good for us too to get on a nice, it was a little bit flatter. That one's mm -hmm. a little more crowned um, and not so much like we slip a bit on that because it's been a little bit slick on that on yeah. the practice field. So it was good to play on that yeah, um, nice, nice big open space. Now I know you are um, hosted by a local family. Mm -hmm. um, are a lot of players choosing that or did some get their own apartments or? Um, well. To be honest, I originally wanted to be an apartment. I came down three weeks early, um, and the apartments, things weren't set up. So I kind of was like, hey, I'm coming down. <laughs> so uh, they had some host family options, and they were still grabbing, <coughs> say, about half and half of the team. Um, but it's great. Love the family I'm with. And it's actually a detached house above, or apartment above the garage. So it's nice, because I do have, um, yeah. And especially being one of the older players, I, I didn't, I love the host families that I've been with in LA and in Maryland, and um, but I kind of like, okay, you know, I've got a business on the side, like I, I, I want my own space, but it, it actually works out really well, um, and it's nice to have a family there, you know, to to fall back on when anything you need. So, yeah. well, tell us about your business on the side. Oh, I sell jewelry for Premier Designs. I Do actually you make it or you just sell no, it? No, don't make okay. it. People are like, oh, you make them? I'm like, no, I don't have the patience to do this. Although I like, like, painting, drawing and all that kind of stuff. But making jewelry, uh, it's a, which is pretty cool. It's actually, the home base is in Dallas. So uh, it's been out for, for been, let's see, 85 is when it started. So my mom actually got started at first. And the only reason I started it is nothing I would have ever done before, <laughs> never. Um, it was after the first year of pro, so I was in LA, and I actually had double foot surgery. And I was like, I don't know where soccer's gonna go, let's see how I can come out of this. 
um, need some extra money for this six month off season, started doing it and just ran with it. And now it's like a, it's just a family of just amazing people. Like this company, I can't even, you just feel, it's like family. Is that what you spent most of this past off season doing? Uh, for my income, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of hard because I've moved every year, so I have to start it back up. But it's kind of funny. I uh, I started getting creative, finding new ways to. It's just a home, it's like a home show business. Right. So right. I'll go in and I'll meet people, go into their house, they bring their friends and stuff like that. But I've been able to then sometimes I'll do it where it's a a soccer group and they come and I sign stuff with them. They have fun. The moms, you know, do the jewelry and the girls are there, take some pictures. So I. And then I'll go it's and it's, yeah, and then I'll go and it's a completely random group of people who don't ever watch soccer and like I've got girls from you know, New Jersey, uh, Maryland. I didn't do it in LA, but Maryland, Western New York. So now I literally am keeping in contact with these hostesses who would have never gone to soccer games, and now they're <laughs> yes. coming to the game. So it's kind of it's fun because I bring a whole different crowd. And I just, I have a lot, my mom has a huge team in Chicago, so it's like 175 women and, so, and a couple guys. Wow. And so we play Chicago on Mother's Day, and I've got, I had a few of my like really good buddies, um, like Dana, one of, she's been a jeweler for a bit, but she's like, you're going to have the blingiest fans, <laughs> but just like a fun group of people to be around, so bringing a whole new crowd, so. That's great. That's, that's spreading the love of the beautiful game in a yeah. whole different yeah. way. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Just a few more questions for you. Um, I want to ask you something you've learned about branching in the last few weeks that really surprised you. I mean, I'm sure you knew who he was before, just in a very kind of one-dimensional. Okay. Yeah. He's a he's a great guy. Like I wasn't so connected, you know, until I came down here. And everyone's like, Oh, Brian James came here. Do you know or is that his title? Managing director. Okay. Of Managing director. Um, but he's a really good guy, and the more I've gone on to a few things, like drove up to Spring, um, got to just chat with him a little bit. Um, he's just awesome, down-to-earth guy. I talked about him surfing at home in Hawaii, and um, I know he probably wants to be out at the fields a bit more um, instead of in the office, so he's getting used to that. But um, it's good uh, to, to look for after scrimmages. I, I've gone to him, and it's like, kind of getting his opinion on, you know, okay, what can I be doing, you know, because he played the game forever, he's just an all-star, you know, so um, it's, it's, a, it's a great, it's a great thing for us to have the pull too from someone who's been playing in the game, who's been through, you know, different levels and to help us um, as, as athletes, as professionals, because it's, you know, we're not getting paid millions of dollars, and so to be able to, have a voice from someone who's been there before is also. One helpful. of the first things he said to me when after the, the dash had been announced was that he remembered his experience um, being picked up by Montreal in the expansion draft. And the, the day he arrived to Montreal, they handed him a packet of here's where you can live and here's oh. some things to do. And that's that stuck with him. He goes, that's the first thing he said to me. He goes, I want to do this for our, for our players. When we got a dash day, I mean, it was fantastic. We had a whole or maybe they emailed it to us, but it was like restaurants to go, literally like a 40 page packet, things to do, places to see, and then we come on Dash Day and they, we get that awesome food book, and, um, but it was like, okay, you know, they're not just, okay, here, here's where you're living, go. Like, they want us to be comfortable in our surroundings, and it is, it is. and even with the host families, you know, he, well, they really wanted to make sure, and, and he, I talked to him a bit too, like, we want you to be comfortable off the field because then you can perform better on the field. So really right. conscious of that and, and, and us as people, you know, not just as, okay, you're a pro, you're, you know. So. Well, and I, I think, you know, for Houston fans having, you know, gotten the dynamo in a very simple <coughs> way, and so it, it's like we already had that experience of, okay, here's a team that's been transplanted very suddenly yeah. to our hometown. We want to make them feel welcome. I love so it. it's funny that eight years later, it's it's the exact same thing. I mean, the dash was announced almost to the day. Really? Uh, yeah, eight years to the day. Oh, of, wow. Oh, San Jose Earthquakes is moving to yeah. Houston and be, you know, becoming the No, it, so. it's been fantastic. Just the to, uh, you know, when I started sharing with my friends and family, like, oh, you're going to get down in that southern hospitality. And you feel it. Like, I love it. Yeah, I really love it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, 
One last kind of sporty question. Do you guys have any thoughts about like a Dash specific goal celebration that, that you know needs to be created to become a BBVA Compass Stadium tradition or a specific Dash Actually, tradition? I was talking to Brian about that and then we haven't really, we're gonna have to, You're gonna have to think of we're gonna have really to, good. maybe people can give us some suggestions, but uh, I don't know, yeah, we have And you know that he scored four goals in the inaugural Dynamo game, so. Okay, we're going to have to yeah. stop that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll place some bets on that. Okay, we're going to wrap it up with a little trivia. Um, anybody that follows Keeper Notes or, or listens to the show knows that, you know, I'm a, I'm a soccer stat nerd and love to ask trivia. And as I like to say, nothing gets past the keeper. Um, so I got some trivia for you. At least one of these you should be able to get. Oh, no. All right. Please don't judge me. <laughs> All right, how many MLS Cup titles has the Dynamo won? Two. Two, all right. Woo! Whew. At least I got one. Okay. Who won the first ever World Cup in 1930? Okay, she's not going to know that one. All right. Uruguay. I'm really bad. All right. Um, Here's another easy one. Trivia, for you. not so good. Which school? Ella probably would be better. Which school has won the most NCAA Division One women's soccer titles after North Carolina? Us. And who's us? Notre Dame. <laughs> And last one, name one of the two professional soccer teams that Randy Waldrum played for in the late 70s. Oh, I don't, tell me out. I don't know. I, I wouldn't have known these before I looked at Wikipedia. Wikipedia. What is it? Wikipedia, 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 Randy. LA Skyhawks and Indianapolis Daredevils. I never knew that. Yeah. Look, you learned something. Ask him, ask him to tell you his stories. When we had him on the podcast last month, he told us about oh, his shoot. experience with these teams. It was hysterical. Oh, man. All right. but Maybe he's told me, and I just, too many yeah. headers. I don't know. But I like the Indianapolis Daredevils. All right. But thank you so much for taking yeah, the time. Yeah, thank you. And we will see you at the next scrimmage, and definitely on April 12th, the day after Can I show the M&M's? Oh, yeah. Let's show the M&M's. Gotta, gotta get oh. these on. But I, I can't eat them yet, because, um, because I gave up sweets for Lent. Dash on M&M's. Gotta love it. If you can see them. Kids, just go to mymms.com. <laughs> love it! Cool. All right, and that's a wrap. Thanks, Britt. <laughs>